Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I, I only have two audiences today. Yes. Not everybody saying good morning. Hi. I hope uh, I hope some of you uh, saw the uh, lunar phenomenon today. The eclipse, the blue, the red. Uh, is it red moon, blue moon? Yeah, you cannot see the eclipse. Yeah. That's right, Shana. You cannot see the eclipse. In fact, we couldn't see the moon. We woke up, went out there, we couldn't see the moon. So I think we missed it. Anyway, but we're not missing the gospel commentary today. Okay. Today's the feast of Don Bosco. Yeah, St. John Bosco. Eh? He's the apostle of youth. He's, been, he's called the apostle of youth. Well, because he was, um, he dealt with children, you know, he, uh, his apostolate was with children, he um, educated children, um, um, had, huh? What's that? Put up the oratory for, for boys, yeah. He was also the founder of the Salesian Order of Priests. And also uh, um, an order of uh, nuns, the um, Daughters of Our Lady, um, Help of Christians. So it's a great saint, a great saint indeed. Okay, so it's January 31st on a Wednesday today. And let's read the gospel. So Jesus departed from there. By the way, the gospel is from St. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 6. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place. To his native place. Accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary? And a brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon. These are his cousins and, you know, not his blood brothers, right? But as we said already, uh, uh, among the Jews, the relatives are also called brothers and sisters. And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. They were scandalized. So where did this guy who we knew very well from his childhood, who grew up among us, where did he get all of this wisdom, all of this preaching, all of this eloquence? Where did he get all of that? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. So what is this place? Where did Jesus grow up? From Nazareth, right? So he went to his own hometown of Nazareth. Okay? He must have been away uh, maybe only a few months or a few years because he was he was living there uh, up to up to his 30th year right he was 30 years old when he decided to already go public and go out and start preaching so jesus was a homeboy to the nazareth uh, community right he grew up there he played there with with his cousins and his friends and his neighbors he uh, enjoyed uh, family life, an ordinary family life, very ordinary family life with Mary and Joseph. Uh, he was working in Joseph's carpentry shop, right? And, and he was doing the laundry with Mary and uh, must have been cleaning house with Mary and must have uh, done chores with Mary, right? And with Joseph. He must have grown up, um, you know, doing fun things with, with Joseph, his father, right? And, uh, you know, any normal kid in the community, 
That was Jesus. And uh, as he was growing up, he did business in the same community, uh, making furniture, doing some, uh, some crafts with Joseph, his father. And they must have been selling uh, these things in the same area, the same community, right? That was Jesus. That was the Jesus they knew. That was the Jesus they were familiar with. Okay? And so, when he came back to that town, already um, uh, on his mission to, to proclaim the kingdom of God, and to identify himself precisely as the Son of Man, the, the, the Son of God, uh, who they have been expecting for centuries, they got scandalized and said, no, how can that be? <laughs> you know, Where did you get all of this? You were just one of us. You were just among us. How can it be that you now speak to us this way? Where did you get all of this? And, you know, they got scandalized because, because they, thought, they thought they knew Jesus enough. But they didn't realize that in the, in the familiarity that they had um, experienced with him in his everyday living with him, they failed to see through Jesus. They failed to see through the mystery that is behind the Holy Family and Jesus himself. Okay? They failed to see the supernatural reality behind behind the human reality that they were seeing every day they failed to see the divinity of jesus christ behind the very human experiences that they were having with him every day so that is why they couldn't make sense out of what they were hearing from jesus and so because they were not ready they were not ready to accept Jesus the way he was. Okay? Then, well, Jesus decided, okay, I will leave you alone for a while. I'm not going to do miracles here with you. I'm not going to force the issue of uh, converting you. I'm not going to, uh, to um, you know, uh, push my agenda any further and try to proclaim the kingdom of God among you. Until perhaps you are more disposed to understand the divine nature okay, uh, of, of uh, this Jesus that you grew up with, this Jesus that you uh, were familiar with. Well, and that, that is a pity. That is a pity. Okay? Now, the truth is, the truth is, see, Jesus lived a very ordinary human life. He was just like one of us. Except in? Huh? Except in sin. Oh. <laughs> okay. He was like us in every way. He was like us, you and me, in every way. Except in one thing. Except in sin. So, many people... Many people are unable to relate with Jesus very much. See? Um, um, they, they are unable to, to appreciate Jesus as a man. See? Why? Because, well, we, we are very well acquainted with Jesus in the host. We see him every day. right? We receive him every day. We are more perhaps attuned with uh, his divine nature as God. Right? But... What we sometimes, and many people uh, actually fail to understand, that Jesus was very much a man. That Jesus was very much a man. In that, that his humanity, his being a man, was actually part of the plan of revelation. So that we who are human beings have a better way of understanding God who is our father Jesus Christ was the connection he was the way right the way the truth and the life that's how he called himself because it was through him that we were to be more acquainted with God the father he came on earth in order to reveal God the father 
But what more effective way is there to introduce God the Father to us than by precisely being one like us, being a man like us, and then showing that, showing that beyond this humanity, we can reach the divine. We can ascend to the understanding of a divine being who is God. Okay? Now, of course, perhaps this is a little bit complicated at this point, but suffice it to say, suffice it to say now, okay, that for us to understand Jesus as God and for us to, under, to, to, to have a better appreciation of the, the Trinity, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit with Jesus, it is very important for us to grow in our understanding and appreciation of the humanity of Jesus Christ, of Jesus as man. Okay? Why? Because it is that is the that is the path, that is the gateway, that is the the, the process by which we can have a better understanding of what is divine. If we, first of all, okay, understand the human side of Jesus very well and how he did things and how he behaved and how he lived his life, how he lived his ordinary family life with, G with Mary and Joseph, the same way that his own neighbors were acquainted with him. We know this guy very well, right? His brothers, his sisters, isn't he the carpenter's son, the son of Mary? See, so they knew him very well. But what they failed to do was to connect that knowledge of his humanity to his divine nature. Right? Now, let us not fall into the same trap. Let's not fall into the same trap. Let us, let us uh, try our best to understand Jesus as a man. Jesus who came to earth to take on our nature okay, in order to free us from sin. All of those mysteries that are divine okay, and the whole reason why he came to earth and the whole reason why he had to die for us, etc., etc., and the whole reason why uh, um, the whole reason behind um, original sin and our redemption and and our resurrection and the glory of heaven—all of that will be better understood if we understand our humanity, okay? and if we understand the humanity of Jesus Christ, who was both. God and man. Okay? He, was, he was both God and man. In one person, in the person of Jesus Christ, there were how many natures? Two natures. Two natures the human nature and the divine nature. Right? We understand that from the Catechism. So, it is important for us to be very well acquainted with the humanity of Jesus Christ. And here's a practical tip. Catholic best practice. How can we be very acquainted with the humanity of Jesus Christ? How do you think? Any suggestions? Huh? Well, before that, Joe. Before that. <laughs> okay, in the interest of time, since we're out of time. The best way for us to get acquainted with Jesus as a man is to be acquainted with his life as narrated in the Gospels. Okay? And that's what we're doing here every day. That's the reason why we read the Gospels every day and we try to understand the life of Jesus. Right? That is the way we will get connected to the humanity of Jesus Christ. By reading the Gospels as frequently as we can. In our case, we try to do it every day, right? And we try to imagine the life of Jesus. We try to imagine what could Jesus have been? What was he doing when he was on earth with, among us? Okay? 
like what these Jews were, were narrating among themselves. Don't we know this guy? We know him. We played with him. We grew up with him. His father is Joseph. His mother is Mary. We know his cousins, his brothers, his sisters. Uh, he was the one selling. He sold me that table. He made that uh, furniture for me. He made that cabinet. And we played. We used to play whatever games they were playing during those times of Jesus. Right? He was so ordinary. He was so ordinary. He was part of the community. He was part of their lives. He lived a very ordinary life like ours. But perhaps the main difference which his neighbors didn't realize was that he was living his ordinary life connected with God. He was divinizing his human experiences. He was supernaturalizing his everyday human experiences he was offering to god everything that he did see and which is another thing we can do see? your schoolwork your chores your washing dishes your 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 uh, taking care of the dogs your sweeping the floor your uh, fixing your bed all of these things are ordinary human chores human activities that jesus himself did i'm pretty sure but the question is, how did Jesus do them? I'd like to think Jesus did them with the best human perfection possible. And then he offered that to God. That is how he supernaturalized what ordinary things he was doing in his everyday life. And so if we do that, then we will be behaving like Jesus. If we supernaturalize the things that we do the ordinary things that we do then we would have behaved the way jesus did and you can ask yourself this question every day and in anything you do if jesus were studying here with me how would he have studied if jesus were waking up in the morning would he be sloppy would he be sitting in the bed and scratching his eyes like in a sleepy manner or would he jump out of bed so as not to allow any temptation to creep in? See? What about uh, washing dishes? What about doing his other chores? Do you think he would be monkeying around when he does those things? Ask yourself that question. How would Jesus have done these things when he was among us? And perhaps... You're going to be doing your, your own chores and your own duties a little bit better every day. And then you can offer that up to God. Right? Okay, folks. There are many more things we could cover in this gospel, but we are out of time. Have a good day, everybody. Okay. Have a good day. We're off to Mass. Okay. Bye.